Hello everybody and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Podcast episode number 93. My name is Mr. Gareth Evans. Joining me today is Mr. Henry. It's RTM, not RMT. Cooper. See, I feel like when I was recording that, I focused all of my energy on like preparing myself for that long as fuck German word. And I'm still not entirely sure how to pronounce it. Apparently I got it right. There's a handful of comments about it. And I couldn't even give less of a shit that I kept, I said RT... R, no, it is RMT, and I said RTM. Real trading money. Every sing, every single time. I didn't get it right once. Every single excruciating um, time. Henry. I mean, I threw up the little <laughs> a little asterisk every time, because I'm not fucking recording the whole segment again. I'm not doing it. Um, so I put in a little asterisk saying the, the correct way, but... You should have got, it. like, a, a computer-generated voice to say uh, RMT, <laughs> and just, like, over... Over, put it over every time you said it See, wrong. Even That'd that was fun. too much effort for me because I just, I was too busy trying to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't, I no idea what it was. I can't even remember it because it was so long. I'll try and. Über, über Stirchentausch something German or other. But however, that, uh, I did um, use that as your middle name this week. The other option was Henry. I promise I haven't been Duolingo in German Cooper. Oh god, no! I, I, As I'm yeah, not the option because a lot of people said that you were pretty good with that pronunciation and that your German's pretty damn good. I mean, so I think credit on that. But, one. Well, one of the one of the good things about German as a language is a it's reasonably close to English in terms of its like sound structure, and b it it's there's pretty much one way to say it. You read it, and that's it. Like there's no silent letters or anything well certainly not in the same extent there is in uh, English. There's no no bullshit. You get what you're given with German, and it's straight. Straight to the point. It's not straightforward. It can be very complicated, but that's it. You either get it right, you get it wrong, and that, that's that's all there is to it. No interpretations. Anywho, enough of my German. Any <laughs> enough of your German. So um, yeah, uh, today's podcast we've got a, a couple of topics to discuss. Um, newsy topics, let's say, as well as the you know the the regular faff that we that we discuss too. Um, after that, we'll be taking some questions from the patrons over on the Discord. Um, then we've got the... We haven't got a Triggered Fanboy this week, but we've got like a Internet Troll of the Week. I'm thought of a fancy name, so Internet Troll of the Week will have to do. Simple. And then after that, um, other YouTube comments, and then Bad Dad Joke of the Week. Um, but to, for first off, uh, just a quick plug. For the, those of you who do like this podcast, want to get this, listen to it a couple of days early, head over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. And if you sign up for as little as $1 a month, you can get access to our podcast for by two days early over the um, the general public. On Sunday, it gets released on YouTube and on all the podcast like different channels. Um, but on Friday, if you're a patron supporter or if you're a supporter on YouTube, you'll get it. Um, early so that's that's awesome and you also get the satisfaction of knowing that you support the content too so if you do like the, the podcast head over to patreon and support us and get rewarded for doing that um we've first couple of um before we jump into these newsy that type of things henry first up what have you been up to this week anything interesting how's things with you dude no fuck all it's been a slow as shit week this week and last week march has got off to a farting start there's just been nothing going on it's been a real damn slog fest uh of in terms of like news stuff trying to find something worthwhile to talk about like, i ended up having to use bethesda and microsoft's deal twice and it's more or less the same story just with a little bit more yeah. information in one of them than the other yeah i just I, it's how can, can someone come out with a game or something please like yeah announcements or a game or something cool, interesting you know but it's not yeah. it's kind of it, this kind of happens all the time though there's new yeah. new um console generation start of the year is normally a bit iffy anyway so we're just treading water seeing what's what eventually something will start happening and i'll be uh i'll be happy but yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've done nothing else i've not even really played anything this week oh well I, I played like a little bit of smash bros i played with the new characters well characters two in one and yes I mean that she was alright, she was kinda cool, but she's another sword person and I've got more than enough sword people in that game, so uh didn't really do much for me and it's not a game I have any love for. But yeah, I've done virtually nothing in terms of gaming this virtually week. Virtually nothing. Um there's one thing I did want to discuss, uh, based on the, the 
the daily trip. But we'll probably get onto it later with the YouTube comments. But <laughs> there was one on Friday, right? And for those of you who are watching this podcast on Sunday, it's like over a week ago now. But for us, we record on Thursday and then there's a daily trip on a Friday. So we didn't get a chance to discuss this in the last podcast. So it was the Avengers um, getting more grind uh, story and I just love the way that they spin this bullshit <laughs> and um, it's just the, just the way that they justify their just uh, their horrible yeah. evil actions right that was a story I, that I, <laughs> I it came up and I was like I cannot bring myself to talk about this again I'm not doing it so I just I put put that in the bin because it meant nothing yeah so the um, no you did cover it, oh, it I, co- was, I covered um, it originally it was, but then they've sort of half it walked the, it back being like we know we miscommunicated I'm like shut the fuck up oh man. did they yeah, oh yeah yeah oh, I, 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 I don't know that I didn't, didn't hear that update but just the original um, <laughs> it's, it's the new um, um, pride and accomplishment um, type of <laughs> totally spiel is, right yeah. it's the way the, the way that they termed it it was like we've got problems with our XB curve and it might mean that it's confusing and overwhelming to newer players. It's like, you're confused and you're overwhelmed with our game, so we're making it more grandy. It's that, it's like, we're, or absolute bullshit justification. Because <laughs> it, it's like, it, they're, they're trying <laughs> to argue. Confused and overwhelmed. The only thing that's confusing and overwhelming is your bullshit PR spiel. Like, I think their argument, which is ridiculous, is that we want you to feel like you've really earned this new skill point. So that you, when when you finally unlock an, uh, uh, the ability to do, I don't know, plus ten damage to this kind of attack, you'll feel like you've earned it, like you've worked for it. Even though the the skill progression is like the only pretty decent bit of the game's various progression paths. Like the gear is virtually meaningless and doesn't go anywhere. The character levels and shit don't really make that much sense at all. But getting new abilities is fun, and that helps. Turn it from just you know a super generic button mashy brawler to a slightly less generic button mashy brawler, and that that's that's all you have. That's all you have, and now you're you're butchering that as well. Um, what did they walk back? What did they say? Oh, it, it wasn't even like a bit. proper walk back. Like they're still making the changes. They just Twitter. tried to clarify it. I I think I can't really remember. It, it was basically them saying, "Oh, we're sorry, we didn't communicate correctly. That's our bad." Playing the um. <laughs> <laughs> playing the apologetic side so generic yeah. wow so that's what i mean like I, I glanced over it and i was like i'm not fucking talking about this i don't need it in my brain right now <laughs> yeah yeah uh getting slower no I, I can't see the the update never mind i'm sure it's out there somewhere but um yeah i just wanted to touch on that because it's it's the kind of thing that um that really gets me uh <laughs> just it's just humorous more than anything it's just so expected that's like we're we're going to make a decision that's going to increase the amount of um, play time that you players will have. Therefore, increase the amount of um, grind in the game, which means more monetization, more microtransactions for us. But we're going to frame it in a way that makes it seem like we're doing you a favor, as in you're confused, you're overwhelmed with this game. And what we're actually doing is, um, is we're doing you a favor. It's it's like who who's. Who swallows that bullshit? Oh, here we go. I found it. So the developer posted it to Reddit uh, six days ago, apparently. And I'll just read the opening paragraph because it says all you need to know. Uh, We wanted to offer more clarification and details on the recently announced XP change. We did not change the XP to increase grind for grind's sake. Our initial blog post was not comprehensive enough to convey what we were doing and why. Dot, 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 dot. So we caused confusion, comma, dot, dot, dot. We get it. So, what are we doing and what? And then there's a few paragraphs just reiterating the same shit. Well, anyway. It's just so, yeah, it's like, so um, nothing. It's so pointless and just there's no need for it. I think it got zero, zero upvotes on the, uh, on the Reddit thing. And then the, the first comment back, this is a terrible move. Leveling up was never the issue. The lack of content was. And that got nearly 800 upvotes on that comment. So, yeah. Well... If you ask me, it's it's going to go the way of Anthem very soon. It's going to be... It's been following um, those footsteps support, since day one. Support's going to be pulled from... Yeah. Uh, it's definitely the in that tier of huge game, very li- few players playing, very expensive to keep supporting, and they're not making enough money going into the future as a games-as-a-service game. Therefore, the only legitimate thing to do as a company would be to pull the rug... And take it out back and just shoot it. 
Exactly. Um, do the do the humane <laughs> thing and put it out of its misery, essentially. Um, so that, that was just a little a little uh, nugget on the Marvel Avengers Square Enix from what well, what is over a week since you're watching this now. But for me, um, it's not quite a week, so I thought I'd mention it anyway. Um, but first up today, we've got another huge corporation who has a um, track record of screwing people over. Um, and there's more controversy surrounding FIFA Ultimate Team. Now, this week in one of your daily triples, you covered uh, the fact that Germany's thinking about um, slapping an 18 plus rating on all games which include loot boxes, yep. which would include for FIFA Ultimate Team. And that's um, that made the news this week. However, we've got a new hashtag trending. It's, it's hashtag EA Gates. Uh, and this is a big controversy which has just um, happened over the last 24 hours. Um, and the crux of it is that there have been accusations made towards an EA employee who is apparently selling rare icon cards, um, the, like the rare player cards that you get in FIFA Ultimate Team, for thousands of euros. Um, so it was leaked, a, a, on a, a couple of these um, transactions were leaked. And on Twitter, and one of them shows three P- prime icon moment cards and two team of the year cards on sale for 1,000 euros. Oh man, I am so, so glad I didn't hell pre-read of a this price. section. <laughs> Sorry? I'm so glad I didn't pre-read this section because I had no idea about this story. I'll just kind of let you type it up, but this is brilliant. Yeah. This is excellent. The, yeah, this is... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, 1,000 euros for those five cards. Uh, and another sale or another offer, let's say, um, was three moments, moment cards, and two Team of the Year cards for 1,700 euros on offer. And it, it shows, a, um, chronologically, this, this offer being made, somebody actually buying it and getting them in their account. So supposedly there's confirmation that this actually went through. Um, so yeah, these cards, the icons and the Team of the Year cards are among the, the most rare ones to get, the, the golden ones. The ones that the YouTubers scream, you know, if you've seen reaction videos where the YouTubers are like, oh my God, falling off the seats, running, th- you know, arms in the air, those cards, right? And uh, <laughs> the only way you can get them is by uh, opening card packs or um, surprise mechanics, EA like to coin them as. We call them loot boxes, money grabbing dirty bastard loot boxes is what they are. And you only have a very small chance of getting these very, very rare cards. And you know, this, you know, this proves that there is a huge economy for it. Like people are willing to pay thousands, hundreds of euros, if not thousands of euros, for these cards. That's what they're worth. However, they're just surprise mechanics. They're not, you know, they're not, it's not gambling. EA have responded to these reports on Twitter. Very, ser- very serious uh, response here. And they say as follows. We are aware of the allegations currently circulating within our community related to FIFA 21 Ultimate Team items. A thorough investigation is underway, and if we identify improper conduct, we will take swift action. We want to be clear, this type of behavior is unacceptable, and we in no way condone what is alleged to have happened here. We understand how this creates concern about unfair balance in the game and competition. We will update the community as we get more clarity on the situation. Now, it's not often that EA come out and address this full face, full front uh, on Twitter like they have done here. This this tweet is under 24 hours old. So obviously these are serious allegations and, uh, you know, somebody on the inside, somebody who's selling on the inside of EA, uh, uh, an EA employee supposedly, um, his arse must be twitching right about now. And um, the, I think the main thing for me, <clears throat> kind of touched on it before, is aside from the fact that somebody is an insider in EA selling this and making a profit, like an EA employee making profit off selling cards because he can just generate these, the developer, right? Supposedly, he can just generate them and sell them. Um, this also raises questions over EA's defense that this, this is not loot boxes. It's not, um, you know, you can't, it's not lead boxes, it's not gambling, because you can't sell them, it's not worth money. But this kind of throws a spanner into that defense. Yeah. Um, you know, there are uh, legal, um, you know, court cases going ongoing at the moment. So they, they, they clearly can't say, oh, they're not worth any money, when people are willing to spend so much money on these things. Yeah, there is literally a real money market for it. 
now, well, assuming all of this is true, maybe it isn't, maybe there's, there's always this fucking air of conspiracy about everything, you can't ever say anything, because someone's like, well, how do you know, do you have, I don't fucking know, right, and just before people start getting, going bananas, uh, but yeah, there's evidently some real money stuff going on, which means that the whole uh, cash out argument that they try and fall behind when it comes to these gambling questions is no longer valid, because people are cashing out maybe not with a system that ea created but people are doing it meaning that these things real or otherwise do have some sort of monetary value in the real world so that's that's uh, how how else is it not gambling that was the only thing you could argue and it's just been blown up like what what other case do you have to make that it isn't gambling now We've seen so many articles and in, in the press, so, you know, the son loves to pick it up. It's like, oh, my child spent £5,000 on FIFA Ultimate Team and um, I, I'm, I want them to get their money back or whatever. You know, you, you see the stories all the time. Kids are buying these packs and they're trying to get the expensive Ronaldos and the expensive Messis or whatever, the, the shiny golden um, cards. It's, it's a gamble. It is. They, they spend money and they try to get the most... The highest value um, prize. If it wasn't gambling, all the prizes would be worth the same. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. You know, there wouldn't be um, a priority over what, or the other. They'd all be worth exactly the same. But it is gambling because there are some things that are worth more, and other things that are absolutely worthless. And whether the worth to yourself is monetary or just that excitement and um, surprise, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. It's still the same. It's, it's still. It's still the same uh, result you get. It's still the same. Um, physical response that you get the same as gambling so um you know it's again another nail in the coffin i would say oh yeah in terms of it's probably why they've um, responded so quickly to yeah you're, you're burning our only fucking bridge here chill out <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh you're destroying our uh, defense so it's just a quick um a quick, there's not much really to, more really to say about that because that that situation is going to be developing but it is what it is yeah. um uh that is EA gate hashtag EA gate and uh, we'll wait and see what happens with that well, one. They just they just make it so easy to to gamble because you're putting in well in theory the same amount of money each time right you're paying X amount to get um, so many points and then you buy a pack with maybe I'll get someone shit but maybe I'll I'll get someone good the amount of money you put in in theory is still the same although the idea obviously is because it's so easy you'll keep putting in that same money over and over and over and over again which is why it's such a problem yeah. for uh kids because all they have to do is click a button they have no idea what their that their parents cards are on there or whatever parents are often super ignorant to this stuff and yeah they bear a lot of responsibility and it's their their job to get informed about this sort of thing but it's, it's never going to happen for everyone whereas the ea are in a position where they can do the right thing the moral thing and maybe not get ch children addicted into gambling stuff and burning through thousands and thousands of pounds worth of literally nothing it doesn't exist although actually if these kids are going to buy up these cards and then going to flip them maybe fair enough you know <laughs> maybe if they're going to you know uh, exploit the free market stock traders do it literally every single day so in that case fuck it play the game let's just do it Ev everyone <laughs> buy up all of the um the cards because theoretically there's going to be an infinite amount of them they can just make as many cards as they like they it's virtually printing yeah. new money and then just sell them just sell them online just become a card scalper yeah. And Why not play them at their own a, game? There's a legitimate um, uh, f future for you there. If you if you're thinking about what to do in the future, if you lost your job recently because of COVID, card scalper. That's it. Feel free to open the teams where it's at. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <clears throat> so there you have it. There's the EA Gate uh, story. Let's move on to the next um, short story, which is uh, in the world of Rust. There's been a bit of a a bit of a. Well, I've I've titled it um, Burnt Rust. Burn so rust. what does burn well so this is an awful segue we're just going to roll with it rust in case you don't know it's a it. um first person survival game multiplayer type thing i mean that's a very broad genre because there's so many games that fit into that now but it's it's one of the most popular ones at the time of writing it's number six on steam charts as um out of like the most played games with about sixty thousand players but when we when i carry on that number might drop quite significantly because of a problem Basically, the developer, French French studio Face Punch, which is an excellent name for a game studio, uh, they've accidentally had a shitload of data lost. It's gone, it's evaporated, poof, 
kaput, nada, uh, because a huge fire broke out in their the data center they use to run their servers, and 25 of the developers' uh, Steam servers are now offline in the the studio. Um, what's it called? The data center in Strasbourg in Germany. So there's 25 servers are just just gone, out of action, and most of the other ones are like turned off so that they can. Not most of them, but a decent amount of the other ones like turned off so they can do maintenance, make sure they're fixed and up and running and stuff. And it's just a huge I'm not 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 like natural disaster, but it's no one's fault. Like no it's not a developer it's not yeah. a developer mistake. It's not like a hack purging all of these files. It's it it's a fire that's happened completely out of um Face Bunch's control in um in Strasbourg, and it's fucked them all up. Uh so they said on Twitter uh, where are, where's my quote? There it is. 25 of our EU servers remain offline due to a fire at OVH data center in the early hours of this morning. Uh, OVH is the center in Strasbourg. Uh, unfortunately, the fire destroyed SBG2 building. We're, expe we're expecting a large amount of data loss across the affected servers. We'll share more news when we can. So they're, they're very kind of blunt about it, being like, yeah, this is this is bad. Like We're, we're, we're trying to do something, but yeah. um, we're going to be straight up and say a lot of data is, is gone. Now there's a lot of problems with that. Yeah, they should be backing up. They should be. Um, they should have fail safes for this sort of thing, especially because the game is so popular. It's not like a small project. It's been around since I think 2018, but it. I think I feel it's taken off more than ever, kind of recently. At least it's can't come Rusty. on my my radar more recently. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's been in early access since 2013 or something. It was released. Um, you know, 1.0, the main version released in 2018, I think. So yeah, um, it's growing in popularity all the time they've been on the top played games on steam absolutely and the thing is uh, uh, what bugs me about it is when i was reading through this twitter post and a, and a few other posts from different you know people about it no one's no one's being nice like this is no one's fault <laughs> people are screaming at me like uh what are you what are you gonna do about it how are you gonna like reimburse us for the grind or whatever and i'm like oh yeah this is annoying right a, a lot of these servers especially ones where you have to like pay to maintain them and, and pay to run them and essentially subscribe to them that's something you're actually losing but like just give them a fucking minute this happened uh well the early hours of yesterday i think march 10th at the time of recording um yeah like they just just give them a minute don't shout at them just yet yeah they probably should have had some fail safes and and pre uh, preparations for this sort of um problem because it, it, it's known to happen there's servers have a lot of electricity going on more chances are they're gonna fucking blow up at some point and these things happen but just chill out so many people i just yeah. saw like screaming about it and i was like oh come on now calm down yeah i mean there's a couple a couple of things to note here is that ovh which runs the data center aren't actually they're not actually um owned by face punch or oh, the, no, no. the developer or anything this this data center is is um ser uh, it's like servers that they they are buying purchasing renting yeah. whatever so they don't own the servers that these that have been burned down as i've got this article here which russian authorities have blamed problems accessing google and youtube on a fire at the data center in strasbourg so it's not just rust being yeah. um affected there's um, google services youtube services in russia have been um affected too so a lot of um, internet um you know infrastructure uh, has been has been, has been you know has been affected by this uh, and then all gamers <laughs> what I care about is like reimburses for our like our lost our lost, time, our lost information. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really? So um, apparently, according to uh, what's his name, Octave Klaber, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he's the CEO of the OVH uh, data center. In a series of tweets, he sort of broke down the situation as it was unfolding and said firefighters were basically like straight on the scene trying to deal with it. Uh, one of the four server buildings was completely destroyed, just gone without repair. That that's Everything in there is kaput. So that uh, S SBG1 was partially destroyed. So that's four rooms gone, but eight still remain. So they're still kind of on top of that. SBG2 is the one that's completely out of order. That's gone, never coming back. SB SBG3 is okay, and firefighters managed to protect it. So that suggests that there was a bit of a fire going on there, but then they, then they got on top of it. And then I think SBG4 is totally fine. That wasn't really affected. So um, that's all, all good in the hood for that one. But yeah, that's a serious amount of um, of data lost. It doesn't specify like what kind of data if it's if they've been storing, you know, personal information there or if it's just game data. Yeah. But fortunately, there yeah. were no injuries. Well, apparently, no no um, 
staff work in the well, data centers are often you know minimal employees because it's often very very automated but no one was hurt no firefighters were hurt they just kind of got on with it saved what they could and it seems to have been a reasonable success in terms of managing the fire like it could have been much much worse that's it um yeah so the last 25 servers worth of um of 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 games essentially and and people will have will have lost their progress um, in the games on the servers which were kind of affected. The, the thing to note here is that Rust is a game which, unusually, the progress on all the servers are wiped every month. So whatever, it's not like these MMO, one of these MMO games where you, you could be on it for years, yeah. like World of Warcraft or something, and just lose a character that you've um, plowed loads of um, hours into developing. No, the, the, the maximum that you've lost is... Um, I think it's on the 11th. Oh, I, I, I got my dates wrong, but I think it's something like a week or two worth of progress, maximum a month worth of progress on a character. Because on a single, uh, a certain date, day of every month, the servers get wiped clean. Um, it's a very interesting way to um, stop people um, overmaxing their character or ma yeah. <laughs> max level in their character. You know, it's um, you know if everything gets wiped every month and you know, everyone's got to start again everyone's on the same playing field it's actually good reason good way to get new players involved because it doesn't mean that when you join other people are over leveled and they just get owned it's the same playing field for everybody at the start of every month so it's an interesting way to do it and that's probably limited their um you know the the, the amount of backlash you could say if if you, you can call it backlash it's just it's just people being arsy, essentially. It's, this is a natural disaster, you could say. Yeah. I don't know how the the the, um, the fire started. Whether it was, you know, that's kind of irrelevant, really. The fact is that there's been this accident or whatever, and then uh, you know you've got you got to deal with it. If, if people, the fact that people are <laughs> blaming, being it's just entitled gamers. Is it just entitled, just entitled humanity? That's that's not yeah, labeling entitled true. games. Absolutely people, right. Yeah. People in. People in um, general are just entitled. It's just the world, how the world yeah. is these days. It's like, what? You're the fire that's going to cost you like thousands of pounds or however, however much to replace. It's affected my online <laughs> character, which is going to be reset in the next couple of weeks. My God, you know what? What, what are you going to do about it? Well, like, Come this on, fella, uh, in response to the the tweet I read, I read out from the Rust Twitter account. He, he straight up just ignores everything they fucking said doesn't give less of a shit just says when's rust coming to playstation i've got an xbox uh, so it doesn't really matter where i play it's a it's a, a redundant sentence anyway when's it coming to playstation i've i've already got it anyway so why does it matter <laughs> what what <laughs> i don't know uh, well that but to be fair there are question marks over when when the console version will come out because it is expected to come to ps4 and Xbox and presumably PS5 and Xbox Series X, but I don't know if that's actually confirmed. So that's just an assumption. Um, yeah, there are question marks whether that'll that'll be delayed now because while the servers aren't in um, uh, in Face Punch's studio, they don't own them. Their their you know employees and staff are going to be busy trying to fucking sort this out. It's a at the very very least, it's an administrative nightmare that they've got to uh, get on top of before Absolutely. they can you know chat with um, Sony and Microsoft about distribution. I just love that these people just don't give a shit. They're just like, there's no, where, there's no, why like no empathy no. there, is there? There's no. Um... And again, as you say, it's not it's not specifically gamers. Like it's everyone. Everyone's fucking like it all the time. Yeah. I think it, uh, entitled gamers is a bit of a label that they get attributed to the people, to the human beings who happen to be game. The entitled human beings who happen to be gamers, they get tagged as oh, gamers yeah. are entitled. No, no, they just they just human beings who happen to be dipshits who think that the world owes them a slice yeah. of cake or whatever i think it's um it, it's just that they're always with the people no matter what industry yep. you're in it's, they're always just arseholes and like, but, um, that's not complain about everyone in the same brush we complain about social media all the time it's like, oh social media is so toxic well, and then i'm like well no it's not toxic social media in itself is just a service it's just a system it's the people people are the problem and it's all sorts of people not just any specific you know uh, niche of of personalities everyone yeah, um, just a couple of points then. The f first point is um, people asking why haven't they backed everything up? Uh, it's going to be pretty expensive to do to do all yeah. that. You know, they need. I don't know. I don't know if they would need double the amount of servers or what. I'm not like that technically. Maybe Metal Shark could probably 
have an answer on the top of his head for for that. Like how, how much more infrastructure do you need in order to duplicate all your information yeah. and back everything up on a daily basis or however often, especially since the game gets reset every month anyway, it probably seems like a bit of overkill. Um, so that's the first point. And the other point is um, that it's... It, it just undermines how fragile everything is in terms of being on the cloud. You, yeah. you believe that every, all your information is safe or your progress is safe in a certain game. Um, but if people aren't backing it up and the, the real life place where your information is stored gets burnt or flooded or exploded or whatever, it's just gone. It's, it's just no, imagine all your Google Drive photos, You know, all those ones that you're... They're probably backed up because it's Google and they're, they're probably backed up like five different places around the globe but you know a huge break in infrastructure for whatever reason could mean that you you lose a load of things that you think is absolutely safe online and it's just not uh, yeah exactly and i feel like this is the sort of thing that i mean it still happens it happens you know reasonably frequently every so often some server farm or something some tech place with um non-physical storage goes up in smoke and, and there's nothing you can do this is only going to start happening more and more with the advent if we keep it uh, gaming focused with the ad advent of streaming like stadia google's like five minutes away from completely killing that anyway but what if your um you, stadia succeeded what if it did really really well and they had all of these you know streaming centers like good to go everyone was actually really enjoying it and then bingo it, 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 it's gone something bad happens no fault of their own they, google did nothing wrong it just got fucked up that means that people's bingo, bingo. people's games have, have been gone their their time and their money that they spent on it is, is now literally worth nothing and i feel like this sort of thing is only going to keep happening more as the world grows more and more digital i'm not saying that's you know growing digital is necessarily a bad thing it's just you've got to be prepared for it you've got to um, be ready for these sort of problems well it's it's going to happen sooner or later a, a, a solar flare could knock out like all the transponders on earth or something yep. right is that is that correct am i am i like if we if we get like I've a seen certain amount of radiation, movies. I know what's up. <laughs> it is, it is it's something that happened, and, and also like if that didn't scare you enough, like if if the um, how fragile everything in terms of technology is right now, the sun could just like wipe it all out with the solar flare. That's that's my understanding. Maybe I'm being um, a little bit reductionist in that, but you know if the sun decides one day that it wants to fart in our direction. Uh, it might just kill all technology, and if that isn't bad enough, um, there's new science research that I saw recently um, to suggest that when the when the um, when the planet changes um, its polarity or something, uh, like it has done like forty thousand years ago, that might introduce another um, apocalyptic event as well. So um, all the changes that happened on the Earth around 40, 45,000 years ago, which which um, you know, human beings started, you know, ruling the world since then. Modern humans uh, evolved from 45,000 years ago. Some people are saying that it was because of the reverse in polarity in the, on the planet. And when that happens again, we're all fucked. Another ice age has come in and then there's nothing we can do about it. So if you thought that that was bad enough, then it could get a whole lot worse. What are you entitled to then? <laughs> hey, what, what, what reimbursements are you going to get then? Fuck all. Deal with it. <laughs> Get yourself a cozy cave. This is, That's what I'm saying. This has turned into a uh, remarkably existential <laughs> sort of <laughs> thought That's, experiment yeah. on the nature of entitlement. <laughs> it's like, what if That's it. What if the world just straight up fucking ended? What are you going to do with your little video games, you little fucking gamer? Or fucking, or? <laughs> yeah, man. Like, it's true. Yeah, we, we've got to, I guess, be prepared to lose the... None of these things matter. We, we're all here talking about games because we like games. None of it fucking matters. It's it's for fun. Yeah. It can help you through a, a you know a, a troubling time. It can be very very good for you. But ultimately, it's it's a thing. And when yeah. that thing is gone, all that's left is you, and you've just got to fucking deal with it, I guess. Just deal with it. And with that note, let's move on to the next section, uh, where we start reading questions from the Discord community. And like I said earlier, if you want to support the content, put your good game in. Um, Patreon.com forward slash pretty good game is where you should go for as little as one dollar a month to get access to the disc members only Discord area. Did I say that right? Um, you get the podcast a couple of days early. You also get um, a shout out, which I'm just about to do for the this week. And um, yeah, you get the satisfaction knowing that you're supporting us, bring you content in the future. You can also join on YouTube too. Um, so yeah, before we get started into the questions by the supporters this week. 
We've got a bunch of new um, new pledges. And by the way, on Patreon, if you didn't know, you can sign up for a year now instead of just a month. And you can also sign up your own currency. So there's a lot of changes, which is why these um, pledges are a little bit of a mishmash. But I'll start with the YouTube memberships anyway. So John Beaver, he, he signed up a, a three or four weeks ago. Um, but thanks very much for signing up, dude. I haven't read out any of the YouTube uh, memberships recently, so I, I'll throw that in today. And Death Tape as well signed up a couple of days ago. Appreciate your support. And then onto the Patreon signups from this week alone. Zoltan Viola pledged $5 per month. Appreciate that, man. Mike Gibbons increased... Um, Oh, this is where it gets com um, complicated. Increased his pledge from one dollar per month to fifty dollars per year. So he's gone to a yearly subscription. Um, so I can't. Really, it's, it, you do get like a, a discount. So I think it's like the five dollars per month, but over a year, so you get a bit of a discount too. Uh, if, if that's confusing enough for you. Um, so thanks very much, Mike Gibbons, Gibbons for the year um, pledge. One dollar a month increased to five dollars a month by Earthworm Ben. Thank you very much, dude. We appreciate that. Um, we've got a new pledger out of the blue, a year subscription, 75 Australian bucks by Cathal, which I believe is the $5 tier, five American buck tier. So thank you very much for your yearly pledge there. And we've had another one, in, another increase from $12.76 or Canadian dollar 76 to $115.28 Canadian by, uh, per year by Raziel Shadows. So again, thank you very much. That is really appreciated and um, you know my eternal gratitude for everyone who does support the content because without you guys it, it just feels like there's a lot of people supported this week and it really means a lot because um, we, we could we honestly couldn't do this without your guys support and um, yeah from the bottom of our hearts thank you very much really appreciate it so with that said let's move into the member questions for this week and Henry, do you want to fire off the first one? Why not? It's a reasonable length this time, not super fucking long. So uh, this is from Colony99. Uh, tacked on to Durlock's question. So I think this was actually in last week's, but we missed it. Uh, do you remember Aliens vs. Predator 2? I threw a LAN party for my 18th birthday, and we used to play that with like 10 people. This game taught me about Xeno's biology. Uh, it also taught me what a horror shooter plays like. Uh, damn, that game was awesome. Any other game franchises or movie license games you fondly remember that desperately need an HD treatment and maybe a slight gameplay overhaul? Did you play Alien v Predator 2? I didn't play this one because there's there's a couple of versions that are popular in different ways. Uh, but the one I played, I think, is from 20, 2010 or 2011. Uh, you had three campaigns that were kind of short, but the multiplayer was pretty funny because you could be a human, like a regular grunty marine, uh, a xenomorph, alien, or a predator, and that's what my um, face hugger comes from. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the crop on the <laughs> on the um, yeah. actual screen, but that's where my face hugger comes from. In terms of what sort of movie license game that I think deserves the HD treatment, my go-to was going to be Terminator, but then I remember they did a Terminator game kind of recently with a very small scale sort of mid-tier developer. I can't really remember who did it. I think it's called Terminator Resistance. Let's have a look. Terminator Resistance. Uh, yeah. And I don't think I don't think it did like particularly well or particularly badly. Like it was reasonably well received for the kind of game it is. It's a fairly generic first-person shooter, but with a Terminator skin set in the um, set in the apocalypse, set in the future, with the machines walking around over it. Uh, it's from 2019, developed by Taeon and published by Reef Entertainment for PS4, Xbox One, and uh, Windows. So, so Terminator probably wouldn't be my answer. And then again, I was like, oh, what about Predator? But then you've got Predator Hunting Grounds, and again, it's a multiplayer thing, it's not really my vibe. So then my next answer that hasn't had a game recently, as far as I'm aware, is Robocop. Keeping it in the 80s sort of hyper-violent sci-fi sort of uh, niche. Yeah. Give me a badass Robocop game where I can just be this walking tank, just taking heat and just blasting people with his fat <laughs> pistol that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had Robocop on my, on my Game Boy, Nintendo Game Boy. That um that old thing I used to love that game um so yeah I'm down for that a new RoboCop game I mean my obvious answer would be a new GoldenEye <laughs> a new James Bond that was the that was the game that I remember from my youth playing a lot and it was a movie tie-in so a new a new GoldenEye James Bond GoldenEye game that would be pretty damn sweet uh, I think absolutely um so yeah thanks for 
unless you've got any more answers, uh, Henry. No, I'm pretty good to Let's, roll on. Thanks for the question there, Cloney. Let's move on to Raspberry's question. What Left for Dead reskin would you like to see, Henry? So I think this is following on from the discussion of the Aliens game, which I just think looks cool. And it, it's, it's, it's a PvE survival experience very much similar to um, Left for Dead. I think this one was specifically pointed at you because there was beyond this question there was not like a reply to i think the previous one which said i would obviously pick um aliens and then he's pointed at you what what, what kind of left for dead-esque pve right. survival against wave after wave of pretty spongy enemies but you can just keep hitting them um i i mean i i, I don't i don't know to be honest i i didn't really play left for dead that at all really um but I do like this zombie genre anyway. So, and the, the only thing I can think of is something like Days Gone or, um, you know, something like that. But you know, it's just essentially Left 4 Dead, isn't it? I don't know. I think I think the Aliens one is going to going to be pretty damn awesome. I'm down for that for sure. But I can't think of one off the top of my head. I mean, the Aliens one just scratches that itch for me perfectly. It's Gears of War with yeah. a bunch of xenomorphs, and that's all I need in my life. And it, even if it's shit. Like like we said last time, I just want to be positive about it. People are like, oh, it's going to be a live service. Yeah, probably. Maybe. I don't know. I, I just want to kill kill aliens. I saw a thing on IGN recently where they broke down some of the new new alien types. And I was like, yes, th this looks cool. They're all the gen generic ones from every genre ever. Where it's like, oh, there's one who's a little bit tanky and he's going to run at you. Or there's one that's going to explode into... Uh, into like poison gunk like beyond the xenomorph regular acid blood like this is going to be even bigger or there's going to be one over there who shoots shit at you I don't care it's what I need it's going to be super generic but with an alien skin and it's what I need in my life so this is yet another podcast of me just gushing about aliens in a game that isn't even out yet yeah why not though why not though uh, sounds good to me right, I'll quickly move on to the next question which I believe is from Lochgar here's a scenario for you due to unspecified circumstances in the near future there is a significant deterioration in technology which affects your ability to listen to music casually as a result most, most people utilize machines that play cassette tapes for listening to their personal library of music you have access to one cassette with roughly 60 minutes of space and the ability to fill it with whatever <laughs> songs you wish what song wow. brackets s songs do you choose 60 minutes of songs your average song length is probably what three minutes i'd say yeah i mean yeah yeah if your radio edition is like three and a half minutes max and then after that like if decent songs five minutes and then upwards maybe sometimes yeah. depending on the song so yeah let's make it's, <laughs> it's fucking hell. the maximum of uh, 12 songs I'd say maybe twelve to fifteen songs. Yeah, it's not, it's not a big album, it, is it? I don't, I don't know. Like I feel, I basically exclusively listen to my Spotify, my whole library on shuffle at all times because I like having a mix of completely different genres. I'm walking down the street and I'll have like some super heavy metal song, and then out of nowhere we'll, we'll bring in a little Beethoven just to, to mellow out a little bit, and then we'll switch over and it'll be some stupid video game soundtrack, and then we'll hop over to some like cheesy pop from the uh, from the early noughties i mean the my, my one of my favorite songs of all time which is one of my go-to's and it always makes me feel better is take on me by aha so that's like right there that's probably that's a that's a finisher i don't want to open with that that's like an album closer you know go out go out on a high <laughs> yeah uh um, this is such a big <laughs> question <laughs> yeah it's difficult it's really difficult on the, to be on the spot because um i've got a I do like a lot of different artists and I couldn't just choose one artist, I don't think, because it would just be, um, you know, if if you only listen to one artist for the rest of your, rest of your listening days, then it's going to be, you're going to be, yeah. you know, hating it by the end. So it's got to be a compilation. I remember d doing this when I was a kid, um, having a double tape deck and recording the um, the Sunday uh, <laughs> Sunday charts on the radio. I used to come on, I used to record the songs that, just press record on your tape and you get the song it's, it was it was li literally piracy you know what i mean yeah. uh but we, we were kids and we wanted to listen to the music over and over again not Kid, just when kids the, uh, don't have mixtapes anymore like i remember um burning cds with like um a handful of lincoln park and green day songs back in the day on our dog shit computer that yeah. took an hour to do it <laughs> yeah um so i couldn't give you an exhaustive list of all the songs that i choose 
Uh, but it'd be a lot of acoustic guitar type music artists like uh, Passenger, Ben Howard, uh, Bon Iver, um, maybe some Radiohead in there. It's that kind of stuff, I reckon. I feel, yeah, I'd probably keep it a mix. All right, all right. let's bang through a few tops. What songs, what comes into mind? All right, we'll take on me. We'll have Creep, because it's like the only Radiohead song I really know. I mean, it's, it's the only song most people know by Radiohead, I think. Um, let's get a couple of Beatles tracks. Let's have Help and I Want to Hold Your Hand. Let's. Oh, you chose the early ones. Like, you got to go for the oh, no. Let It Be or Bowl hey bowl, bowl, like bowl Haircut Beatles uh, is, is peak <laughs> for me. Yeah. Uh, it's because right, I relate. My hair grows out like that, and I've got to I've got to te- force myself to fit into that <laughs> to that style. Yeah. Um, let's get a little bit depressing and put on like "Paint It Black" by the Rolling Stones. Let's go a little bit heavier. Let's put a, put a couple Slipknot songs in there for when I want to feel feel a bit aggressive. It's classic. I think you need some. Um, I think you need some Queen for a bit of energy. Like "Don't Stop Me Now" or see "Don't Stop Me Now." I sort of hate you, you it. You can't help but get excited. Yeah. Like, don't you feel like you just need to start like moving when that yeah. song comes on? Because it's just such an energetic tune. That's the thing. Don't That'd stop me cool. now. I sort of hate it because we did it in school. In like, you know, in, in um, well, maybe you don't know, but any of our listeners may or may not know. In year six, when you're how old are you in year six? Like ten, I think ten or eleven. You do like your fight, like a music, a, a performance, like a play. And we did yeah. um, Cinderella, and we as one of like the songs in the musical for like all of us to sing together as an awful 10 year old class was don't stop me now so we had to sing it over and over and over and over and over again so i sort of hate that song now and i can't really um really really dig it but then again bohemian rhapsody like that that's a that's a good one that's it's it's five songs in one so uh, you get you get five five for the price of one although it's like uh what seven eight minute i don't even know how long it is maybe it's longer than that but yeah you get a value for money with that one for sure long track (laughs) um i'd probably put like uh, some of the doom music on um like rip and tear and the only thing they fear is you just because they slap like if if you're walking somewhere and you're in a rush put that on and you'll get there at sharpish (laughs) Are we done? Uh, I, if I keep going, I, this segment won't ever end. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> for the sake of uh, letting this podcast end sometime today, yeah, we'll just end that one there. Th- but thanks for the question, Lochka. Let's move on to Marcus Hicks's question. Okay, my question for this week. In an era where many developers are pushing the envelope for better, for ever better graphics, it's been interesting to see a rise in the number of interactive novel slash visual novel styles of games in the mold of the old fight, fighting fantasy slash choose your own adventure books. Have you guys ever tried anything from this subgenre? And if yes, what did you think of them? Yeah, I don't really have much experience with um, visual novel games, but I remember enjoying the choose your own adventure like storybooks when I was a kid, but it's just not anything in terms of gaming I've really dipped my toes into, to be honest. No, I think this is the same here. Um, interactive novel. I think the closest thing that I've played is um, uh, what the hell is? Um, is it? Don't no. Sorry, I'm doing. Um, I'm doing a quick search here. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the game. Um, Life is strange. <clears throat> it's kind of a visual, not is it really? I don't know. Um, it, it, you don't really have a lot of choice in that game, and it's, and it's just like you walk. It's from the D- Don't Nod Entertainment, who are the developers of um, Tell Me Why. Um, they actually made Vampire too, but that's a different type of game. But Life is Strange, from what I remember um, of it, it's just you're the, this character called Maxine Caulfield, Max, and um, it's her story about you know and. It, there's not a lot of choice in it. You just got to you got to live through the story. It doesn't really qualify in the same way as I think uh, Marcus Hicks wants. But yeah, that's what I think. Like I've played the tell some of the Telltale games, like The Walking yeah, Dead, Telltale games, yeah. and Closest, Until so. Dawn, and they're sort sort of in the similar vibe because they are narrative driven with minimal gameplay, and it's, it's the idea is that you you make characters' choices for them. But I, I wouldn't really call them visual novels. I don't really think that's the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Uh, but no, I've, in terms of visual novels, no, not really. 
done a lot of that. So um, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry it's not a better answer. <laughs> It is what it is. Okay, final question, I believe. This is from Metal Shark. The year is 2022. I feel like we need like dramatic music. The year is 2022. Sony have provided a well-deserved, lucrative, one-off sponsored video of the PSVR 2 uh, with, all, with all new kit for the pair of you. And you're about to try their yet-to-be-released multiplayer Star Wars vs. Star Trek VR game. Alas, there were no controllers provided, and Sony being Sony, your PS4 controllers won't work. Not to worry, Sony will let e will let anything else be the controller. What inanimate object in your lounge do you reach for as your prospective lightsaber or phase gun? <laughs> uh, uh. I mean, if it's if it's a lightsaber, you just need something you can hold with with two hands. So it's got to be, you know, uh, uh, big enough. So probably just let, like a TV remote. That's pretty basic, pretty simple. Yeah, can hold that rolling pin. Yeah, that works. yeah, rolling pin. Got a bit of heft to that. Or if you want to be real dangerous, get you know a spoon or something if you're really strapped for uh, supplies. A gun though, that's got to be something with a bit more of an angle to it. However, I believe yeah. controllers are, are, are often have a good because they've got the handle there, and that's you can kind yeah. of mime a mime a gun like that. I think a controller held in a certain way as a as a mime uh, mime gun could work reasonably well. I've got the um, ideal answer right here alongside me. I'm going to go for the minigun, right? It's a very good choice. <laughs> what? I mean, who doesn't want to kill people with their guitar, man? I could use it as an axe what? as well. You could. I don't think I mean? the, uh, the crew of the Enterprise would be very appreciative of you <laughs> dropping in on this new alien race that you're trying to make contact with, and you just blast in them like Terminator. If they're friendly, I could just play them a song. Okay, so, so it double, is a functional use. guitar as well as a minigun, I see. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can, you can, if they're friendly, you can sit around a bonfire and have a nice sing-along. Or if they're not friendly, you can just take them out. It just turns, warp, warps into a minigun and just <laughs> holds them all down. Man. I love it. A fight that they didn't ask for with foreign invaders on their planet <laughs> and you're just going to exterminate them. There you go. <laughs> that is done. Thanks for the question. Mr. Metal Shark, and let's move on to the next segment in this podcast, which is the Triggered Fanboy Comment of the Week, or I'm, as I'm going to call it this week, it's the the Naughty Little Troll of the Week. Mm. All right, so to understand this, it's, it's not triggered, it's, it's just naughty, it's just a naughty little troll. Um, you need a little bit of context, a bit of backstory in this. So this, this comment is on the video where um, Avengers gets more grindy. We talked about it earlier. And uh, this comment comes from Mirko. Son of a bitch, I picked this one out already. <laughs> so this is, this is what you need to know, right? He comments, hey, Avengers game dev here. You're getting this all wrong. We are doing this to increase the value a player feels when achieving a new level. We all like fun, no? We understand that everybody appreciates gaining higher levels, so we offer XP boosters in our store. I mean, he's he's, he's got Nailed you there. He, you just want those boosters. <laughs> Nailed it, essentially. Um, I, you could see that being true. I mean, I read halfway through that and thought, maybe this is actually one of the game devs. And then, obviously, uh, at the end, when he mention, mentions the XP boosts, uh, it kind of tips you off that this guy's been a bit and a bit of a troll. I think the two comments fall for it. They bite. So you've got a, a Black Papa yeah. Link. Admit it. You've accepted that people aren't going to give it the time of day. So you're just squeezing the last 10 or so whales you've got for their savings. You're not fooling anyone. It's like, well, that means he's definitely... You, you, we're not believing, Mirko. Mirko, if you're out mm. there, I don't believe you. You're no dev. You're, you're, you're hoodwinking people. And yeah. then there's... Uh, D, D. Jepsy says, either you're trolling or you should look for a new line of work. Um, and I think it's certainly the former, my friend. Uh, but yeah, that was one of my comments that I picked out. So you've uh, you've stolen one from me. Yeah, I mean, there was no triggered... You've been too nice again this week, Henry. Not triggered enough people, so try harder. There's been nothing and you juicy. Get stolen, will you? The closest thing that pissed people off was talking about Naughty Dog multiplayer for The Last of Us. And that's not even... That's like we're all most of them are like oh it's just going to be live service thing sort sort of angle and i'm like well yeah probably that there's nothing 
they're not like mad at me about it or mad about anything particular. It's just, oh, the game's probably going to be shit because it's live service. Which, to be fair, that is an assumption. An assumption I agree with. It probably will be live service. But that is just an assumption. Look to uh, Ghost of Tsushima. That's the reason I'm... I've got slight, you know, reservations on just jumping on it because Ghost of Tsushima came out free, no additional monetization, it's just, here's a cool multiplayer mode we did for fun. So, maybe, maybe, Last of Us 2, or whatever this multiplayer thing is, will do that. I have my doubts, but maybe, there is a chance. Anywho, um, where, let's go for this hard comment, let's get this out of the way quick, so that I can move on with my life. Right. As we touched on earlier, I got uh, a few people saying that I did good pronouncing a certain German word, which means, in English, entertainment software self-control. Um, and Yeah, there's a few comments of the different things, so I'll just pick this one from Bjorn Nielsen, who says, I'm from Germany. Okay, you pronounced, insert word here, very good. And it took me, like, so in the video, I, I gave you like a couple of attempts, and then I got it. At least from what I thought, I got it. I was quite confident in my pronunciation. And then I carried on. Then I put a bunch of other um, failed attempts at the end because I thought it would be a fun little Easter egg. Trust me, there was double that. There was loads. The, out, the, the, the end screen is about 20 seconds. And there was about 50 seconds worth of... You know, just like lagging out. Okay, so I have said it once correctly. So this shouldn't take as long. Uh... Unterhalt... Fuck, I've got it wrong. Haltung soft... Unterhaltung software selbst der Kontrolle. Unterhaltung software selbst der Kontrolle. I think. I think that's correct. That's more or less what I said last time. <laughs> and that's what I think is the case. Yeah, it's true. Did you, did you just see Metal Shark's um, remix? Oh my god, that was so funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, doing God's work there, Metal Shark, with... <laughs> sticking it to a back and track and, and turning it into the, one of these... Uh, these I mean, uh, songs get me into some Funny. dirty you know european techno club in uh, in berlin and we'll see what happens yeah that was class uh, it's uh, worth the subscription <laughs> money alone was that uh, mean for sure um so with that in mind um yeah i had a couple of comments on that but the first one i want to Next one I want to read it, obviously, I'm sorry, is Ravage 3D Work, <clears throat> which is the way that no, you pronounce no, it. Yeah, I've, I've seen this one. <laughs> he says, but wait, ain't you, ain't, but wait, ain't paying for your Patreon just like loot boxes. We pay an extra cost and never know what we're going to get. Ha 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 Jokes, well done on trying the Usk name. Um, that is completely false because, you know, I always know exactly what you're going to get from us on this channel is a bunch of dorky Brits talking shit and ranting about the games industry. And that is... And maybe an existential true. crisis or two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Throw, you know, you know it's, it's always an eclectic mix. Uh, but you never, you know, you, you, you do know what you're going to get. Uh, so you, you're absolutely wrong there. <laughs> Ravage 3D work. So uh, take it back and definitely sign up because it's for the good of humanity. Um, okay, I've got one here, which like I, I just thought it was, I thought it was fine. I think it's on last week's podcast where I think there was a question about uh, Anthem being dead and EA are just gonna like rip out the guts of it, uh, repurpose its mechanics in another game, or just put a different name on the Anthem box and just ship out the exact same thing over again. So this one's from Raven Knight, who is a regular commenter. Uh, but the first part of this comment, I just thought it was. It's, it's spot on. That sounds actually awesome. Uh, Anthem will be FIFA 2022 as a jetpack street soccer arena. That sounds fucking awesome. I don't care about foot soccer. Get the fuck out of it. I don't care about football. You know, the one that people play football. play with their feet, not with their hands. Um, yeah, I play the shit out of that. I don't care about football at all. But if I got a jetpack and it felt as good as flying in Anthem, that would be so sweet. That would be cool. Or, or Quidditch with the Anthem. It basically, skins, it basically right? is, like that. That just sounds great. I mean, it's, it's Rocket League, but with your feet instead of um, a little matchbox car. But that sounds cool. Like I'm totally, totally up for that. You say it as if it's Down a joke, up. but I, I, I would dig that. <laughs> you joke, you joke. <laughs> but uh, the reality is, it sounds cool. Um, so my next couple are from the same person on the same kind of topic, and this is Tony Tony Shulman. 
who comments off, um, often, aka turns from the Discord. He says, he got a couple of middle names for each of us here. Uh, and for you, he's got Henry, look at me nailing foreign languages, Cooper. <laughs> and then for me, he's got Gareth, consumers getting shafted rant incoming, Evans. I mean, what a, uh, what so, a classic double act, eh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Tons, for the, um, for the comments there. Uh, there was one, one I, ju- I think I've just lost it. It was really fun. There, here we go. From uh, Day Off. And again, it was uh, I was on last week's podcast. And it's this is really fucking hard to read. Henry, I don't backwards set my titles video, Cooper. I don't even know what I just wrote. <laughs> and I'm going to force you yeah. to go back to last week's podcast to figure out what the hell yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, there was a bunch of them. Uh, Night 616, RTM, please, not RMT, please, not RTM. Um, Bob Bullard says, Tech says RMT. Uh, oh, no, that was a different one. But a lot of people commenting. You know, we had a discussion last week about always putting um, a mistake in the video so that people can get engagement. I'm not sure. There's at least four comments on that video about you saying RT, RTM instead of RMT. And I think, you know... I, th- I thought when I was watching it because it was so overtly wrong and it was done so often. I was like, he's definitely done this on purpose because you spoke about uh, it last yeah, week. Yeah, it was on purpose. Oh my God, you fell for it. Ha 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 But then I checked the other two videos and didn't spot anything overt. So it was like, well, maybe he did just fuck yep. it up. And if you'd, yeah, if you'd have gone with what I said, you, you, could just, you could just, you know, you could just claim that, yeah, ha, 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 I did it on purpose. Well, the best version of that comment is this one because he sort of... Um semi shoots himself in the foot it's from bob bulat text says rmt he said that it stands for real money transaction even though that's not what i said it's real money trading so you clearly weren't listening that much uh yet he keeps saying rtm don't you guys proofread or rewatch your shoots while editing what kind of rubbish journalism is this ign uh what i think is funny is it's a solid fuck up like it's a decent consistent little fucking <laughs> ball drop and, and like yeah. i'm not even sorry because i think it's hilarious um yeah it but is. the face that do, uh, don't you guys proofread or rewatch your shoots while editing it well d- if, if you had paid enough attention in the video you would see that every time i said rtm i threw up a little um uh a little asterisk to correcting it making uh throwing it's, it's not a full a full correction but it's it's an acknowledgement <laughs> that i got it wrong so very consistently but clearly yeah. you didn't watch this video with enough detail that you expect me to watch the video with enough detail to realize that I did make an effort to partially rectify the mistake and um, I, I, I just love being compared to IGN it, it's 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 so good I, the idea that you even consider this journalism is is a bit of a fucking stretch <laughs> uh, yeah so that was Bob Bullard's take on it um, however we do have somebody who's got your back here Adam Pavelek 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 RTM, RMT, FBI, or KFC? Who gives an F U C K? We all know what you mean, mate. We all make mistakes. Oh, I didn't I like see that, that one. That's good. I like that. With the little the comment of the week. I like that. Yeah, one. that's nice. Right, I have one. But yeah, there was there was at least six comments. Oh yeah, <laughs> about your mistake, that's... Henry. Do it every single time, and then you can get yeah. away with them. You can just get away with them, and then it'll be like a little Easter egg in all the videos where people will be like, "I wonder what he's going to fuck up this time." <laughs> and then there'll be the the people who know and the people who don't know, and so the people who don't know who take the piss out of you will get will get a, the piss taken out of them by the people who do know that it's an inside joke, and and then everyone will just have a good laugh and they'll, and and the joke will go over some people's yeah. heads and then all get laughed at. It's like pointing and laugh at him because he doesn't know what's going on here. And in reality, you're just free to make as many fucking uh, mistakes as you want. I think what I need to it's, do it's a win win win. I need to develop some sort of code so that people know when it is a real mistake or you know a troll. Well, I don't know. Bury it in the yeah. description, like right at the bottom, because no one fucking reads the description. Uh, being like at this timestamp, just like gotcha <laughs> or something like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I have one more comment. I just think it it's funny and emblematic of how so many conversations on the internet go. Um, and this is on Naughty Dog hiring multiplayer um, developer. And part of the conversation was that there are various r- leaks and rumors suggesting that game a bunch of other PS4 games are coming to PC, and there are some confirmed to be, but they haven't said which ones yet, apart from Days Gone at the moment. So this person said, yeah. Smite, uh, no, not Smite, Sim- Simty, okay. Uh, I just need Bloodborne on PC, OMG. And then Ben comes back and says, who cares? 
But the funny thing is, well, A, this person cares because um, they posted it. So perhaps he means, who cares that you need that? All right, fair enough. But five people liked it. Five other people care about, or at least share the opinion, that Bloodborne coming to PC would be a cool thing. And this little Ben boy, he got nothing. And I love seeing little things like this. Oh, who cares? Well, clearly these fucking guys do, and no one cares about your comments, so eat a dick. Yeah. Got ratioed there, didn't he, for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, all of my comments for this week. Okay, I've, I've got like a, a bit of a puzzling comment of the week from Royston Tipping, who says, Oi, Gary seems right fed up with this shit. It's all right, man. Gary. <laughs> uh, all right, Gary. I don't, I don't know who... Gary. Or what he's referring to there. I'm not sure if he did mean me, because my name's closer to Gary than Henry is. However, what am I fed up with? I don't, I don't know. Uh, but the fact that he's offered me consolation, it's all right, man. I, I like it. I, yeah. just, I just like it. doesn't the, matter what uh, it is. You're okay, Gary. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about who you are, what, what you're fed up with. It's all right, man. It's all right. So thanks, everybody, for your comments this week. Uh, let's move on to the, the final segment of this week, which is the Bad Dad Joke of the Week. Right, Henry, brace yourself, strap yourself in. Dioto Orion has contributed this week's Bad Dad Joke on the Dad Jokes um, channel on the Discord. I'm not sure if I understand it, but I'm going to try it. Why are warehouses called warehouses? Why? Because by normal phases of the moon, they are men. But at full moon, they turn into a house. <laughs> right, okay. It's as in, it's werewolves. Yeah, it's a play yeah. on the werewolves thing. However, I, I, it's gone way over my head. Um, but appreciate the contribution there, Dioto Orion. Uh, just, um, yeah, that was the only one that was not um, a bot. Submit, submitted by bot this week. So, you know, if, you, if you've got any dad jokes of your own, leave them in the dad jokes channel. And, you know, I'll, I'll pick my best of the human con contributed ones. And there you have it. Um, whether it's good or not, I essentially, whether I understand it or not, I'll read it out. It really <laughs> doesn't matter. It. The bar is low. <laughs> and if and if anyone can explain to me what, what that one is, uh, just just let me know. But by normal phases of the moon, they are men. Well, but so, at full moon, they turn into a house. Why are, so it's a person it? who, you know, for regular day life, most most of the days of the month, he's, he's just a guy. But then when it's yeah. full moon... A, a weird man. No, he's yeah. just a, a warehouse. Yeah. And then at full moon, he'll turn into a house. Got you. I'm not saying it's funny. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be funny to enjoy. It, it, it doesn't have to be funny to be a dad joke. That's kind of the qualifying That's, factor, it is. isn't it? That's absolutely true. And on that note, uh, that is the end of the podcast. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks to everybody in Patreon on YouTube memberships for supporting the content. Without those guys... We wouldn't be here producing content for you. And if you do want to support us, head over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming or just click join on YouTube. And we really appreciate that. Nothing left to do but to say thank you for watching. On behalf of Henry and myself, we'll see you again next time. Until then, bye for now.